we're here to change the game all over again. We need to get this right because our customers are counting on us to deliver and keep their families moving. Now, we really have less than nine months to execute on a, a fantastic plan. TMMI is situated on 1160 acres. We're building 1,700 cars a day here. We have to continually keep producing the 2019 model year in addition to not only moving new tools in, new equipment in, and teaching everybody on the 2020 Highlander. So we need everybody all in. It's a little bit like climbing Mount Everest. Even if you've climbed it before, every time you do it, it's different. To do it successfully and not die, you've got to be really well prepared. Does that look all right to you guys? You've got pretty much all of America watching. There is a ton of pressure there's a lot of resources that go into it, a lot of money, there's a lot of big eyeballs, but we really want people to be able to remember that this is more than just a car. I want us to be able to move somebody to be cheering for the car, cheering for the brand, cheering for who we are. The other side of it is kind of like tears, that we touch your heart enough that kind of makes you understand that we're deeper than just selling products. We're, we're part of your family. The devil's in the details and it's all details, right? So. There's a lot of little things that we've got to do to confirm that we're ready to launch. The Highlander, it's super important to our lineup. I think it's, you know, it's become one of our volume vehicles. We're gonna sell about 250,000, right? So it's important because the fact that the competition in this segment, the segment grows and the competition is going after is really hard. So how we start today with the press conference, how we market it, as we train for it, I mean, this is a critical product. Oh, okay, on that sheet of paper that someone wrote me, it said automotive news. Let's see how it flows. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. down there too, yeah. The other thing is at the beginning, I, t I talked to Jen, the teleprompter, at the beginning, um, we have a lot of dealers that are here. Yeah, we have, the, so I'm gonna do that. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it very simple. So I just told her, I will, I'll, I'll do a 20 second lead in. Um, how much time we got? We got 10 after, so it's like 11 minutes. Okay. All right, time to get it on. Okay. Thanks for being back here up near the front row. I can look at somebody and smile. Jack, Handsome fellows. Jack, Thanks for you? being here. You. Thank you very much. All right, really good. Some Highlanders. We're gonna sell some Highlanders right now, baby. Please welcome Group Vice President and General Manager, Toyota Division, Toyota Motor North America, Jack Hollis. 19 years ago, Right here in New York, we had a world premiere that changed the game. The 2001 Toyota Highlander was introduced and made its mark on the midsize SUV market. And we're here to change the game all over again. Check this out. The fourth generation design of this highly influential SUV sports a new chiseled look. The new model takes a dramatic design direction, combining a powerful SUV presence with sophisticated detailing. Smart key entry, 
LED headlamps, fog lamps, and eight-way power driver's seat, hands-free, power back door, premium projector headlamps, 12.3-inch touchscreen display, even the shape of the taillights and side mirrors contributes to the vehicle's stability as the air rushes by. So I want to thank you all for taking time here today. Have a great New York Auto Show, a great week, and happy Easter, everybody. Thanks. What's great is that people are in the U.S. will let us know what they want, and that's what we'll deliver. And I promise you that Toyota is prepared for whatever that's going to be. I want to give you options to drive. If you tell me I really want an electric car, then guess what we'll produce? Electric car. Expectations for Highlander are continued growth. You can see the growth because of the great product itself, because of the Highlander, and I think the all-new Highlander, uh, both saiki uh, Millie Marshall, and the whole team has put together a wonderful product. Now, we really have less than nine months to execute on a, a fantastic plan. We don't get to rest at all until about six to months to a, a year after launch, and that's what it's about. A TMMI uh, is situated on 1,160 acres. We're building 1,700 cars a day here. We build the Sequoia, the Sienna, and the fabulous Highlander. We're the only producer of the Highlander for you know North America, South America. Uh, now we're going to be exporting to Europe and the Middle East, so it's it's huge. For us to prepare for a new model like this, we start you know three four years prior to SOP. So what we'll do is we'll form some pilot teams. The pilot teams will go work with the designers to understand what's changing in the vehicle. Our our responsibility from a pilot perspective is take what the designers uh, have interpreted as the customer demands and needs, what they're gonna change about the vehicle, and then interpret that into how do we need to prepare the shop. The challenge, and quite frankly, it's an opportunity for us, volume is good on SUVs. So we have to continually keep producing the 2019 model year, in addition to not only moving new tools in, new equipment in, and teaching everybody on the 2020 Highlander. So we need everybody all in. How frenzied does it get leaning up the line off? You know, it's, there's a, it, the devil's in the details and it's all details, right? So there's a lot of little things that we've got to do to confirm that we're ready to launch. It's an HV, it's gonna get a heat shield bracket. You know, all the safety things, all the quality things, all the productivity things. How do we make sure we got the right spare parts? How do we make sure that we've got uh, the tools in place? How do we make sure that the, st the team members have been trained? How do we confirm that we have all the right quality checks? There's, it's, it's pretty frenzied. If you pick both of them up, uh -huh. you're going to plug this one in, so and then, and then you're going to plug this one in, and so that's going to save you about two, three seconds. We will make you an industrial athlete. We're not going to come in and you automatically go to the line and you sink or swim, you try to learn it. But anytime they need additional training, we take them offline and we put somebody else back on there. They may go back to the training room and do some functional skills for the new 2020 Highlander. There is a lot more pressure when you're out online. You have one shot to do it. So I wanna make sure I train the team member so they have that one shot to get it right. Up here, they're entitled to mess up as much as they want. Down there, they don't have that chance. Highlander All Entered was 56.2 against the target of 43. For OR, blue was 97.5 and gold was 99.7. Trial update, of course, we've completed all the trial builds. We've built 135 shell bodies and weld shop. Um, so there's a secondary process that's got to be added to the supplier. So and we'll. In September, which is one month prior to that trial, we will train everybody on those changes. I'm excited. I know everybody's excited. Make sure you keep your teams excited because this is going to be the best launch in North America history.
you've got pretty much all of America watching. It's got to be amazing. And that creates a ton of pressure. It's something that we thrive on. I like working under pressure. You know, everybody has their own philosophy, whoever runs marketing. Mine was about two keywords, cheers, tears. But we really want people to be able to remember that this is more than just a car. I want us to be able to move somebody to be cheering for the car, cheering for the brand, cheering for who we are. The other side of it is kind of like tears, that we touch your heart enough that kind of makes you understand that we're deeper than just selling products. We're, we're part of your family. When you buy a Toyota, when you lease a Toyota, when you're part of the Toyota family, you represent something to us that's more than just someone that just purchased a car or truck. You talk about a Highlander that's selling about 250000 in a segment that has something like 24 competitors now. Think about that. They're all very similar. So the challenge for Ed in this is how do you separate yourself even more from the competition? It's an extremely, extremely crowded landscape. The Detroit guys have decided that they're going to get out of the car business. So they're focusing all their attention on trucks and SUVs. So that means they're putting a lot of money and a lot of resources into the midsize SUV segment because that's going to be potentially one of the, their volume leaders, and that's exactly where Highlander is going to. So this is probably one of the most difficult launches that we're going to have as a company, and so we need to make sure that whatever creative that we come up with is going to definitely resonate, but it's also going to be true to what we are as Toyota. The Go Highlander will be really interesting to see how we uh, embed that through the big game concept. We have a process within the company for development that's called T-squared or Total Toyota. We have four major agencies, Saatchi, Burrell, Coneal, and Intertrend. They represent general market, the African American market, the Hispanic market, and the Asian market. It's really a collaborative effort. It's led in many cases by Saatchi, but the creative process actually is a collaborative amongst these four agencies. It all starts with inspiration, being observant, you know, the things you read, the movies you see, the music you listen to, the way you see the world around you, and then translating that into a, a relevant story that makes sense for what you're selling and who you're selling to. It's interesting because we found that the personalities of mid-size SUV drivers and owners uh, is really different from what we've seen in the past 10 years. So our target or our Highlander um, owner is going to be younger. They're going to put more emphasis on their vehicle reflecting their personality. It's understanding how one key truth or human insight can cross all of those different ethnicities. Um, and coming up with an idea that emotionally connects people on that human insight. So it's not just, you know, driving up in a mom mobile or driving up in a soccer dad SUV. Um, they want something that says, hey, I've arrived. To put an ad into the big game is unlike anything that we do within the company because the entire world is watching and also the entire world is extremely critical of everything that you do. It's a difficult challenge, but I think the team, as well as working with, with Saatchi and Saatchi, and as well as all of our TDAs, it'll, it'll work. All right, so we just got out of leadership. It was a tough meeting, a lot of questions, a lot of scrutiny, but I think we're going to get through it. I think we're going to be all right. We just got a lot of work to do. Um, I hope you guys don't have plans for the weekend. <laughs> Sorry. The way we get to here is a long road. There's a lot riding on it. You know, we've, uh, we're going to be featured on the biggest stage in the world. And this is the Highlander launch. It's, it's the biggest, most important launch for 2020. So the stakes are very high and the pressure is very high and the expectations are very high. The opportunity for creativity and emotion is significant. Um, the opportunity for Toyota, when you think about the role SUVs play in the lineup, equally significant. So I think SUVs have kind of changed the game in the automotive industry in the last five to 10 years. For Toyota, Highlander's a huge opportunity.
at the risk of sounding dramatic, it's a, it's it's a little bit like climbing Mount Everest. Even if you've climbed it before, every time you do it, it's different because the weather changes, the conditions change, the mountain changes, you change. And to do it successfully and not die, you've got to be really well prepared. You've got to be a team. You don't. You never. You would never want to do something that massive on your own. So you've got to be surrounded by the right people.